Nice to see you. Um, as always, it is a privilege to be able to bring a word. And um, I believe that God can meet you exactly where you're at. And uh, I was saying in the, in the last service, and I believe it again for this service, I mean that both uh, literally, uh, whether you are here in the room or if you're joining us online, welcome to you online. Uh, but I also mean it figuratively. I believe that God can meet you exactly where you're at in the location of your heart. Where, where, does your, where is your heart located this morning? God will meet you right there. And, um, and Webby, Webby, first of all, <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday for yesterday. I just, um, yes, give it, come on, you know the rules. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was just looking over at you during, um, during worship and um, in so many ways, I believe that you are better than ever. Um, but I just felt like God wanted to say this morning that your best days are ahead of you and they're not behind you, they're ahead of you. And for both you and Nikki and, and your marriage um, and even work-wise and so on, your best days are ahead. I don't know what that looks like, like, but I just know that God has incredible plans for you and you can hope in the future and you can be excited for the future. And so be encouraged and happy birthday. You are so awesome. Why don't you take your seats, give someone a nice friendly smile on your way down. Thank you, team. Wonderful job. The title of my message is Golden Hour. Golden Hour, you can write that down. <laughs> and, um, and I think if this message has a goal, if it has an objective for you uh, this morning as you leave this place, um, my prayer would be that you would have a deeper, uh, intimacy with God. You can write that down. You would have a deeper intimacy with God and that you would have a greater awareness, a greater awareness as you leave this place today and you, as you go about your day and your lives and your week, that you would have a greater awareness of the fullness of hope, the fullness of hope that we have in our eternal Lord, our eternal God, our eternal Lord, Jesus Christ, who came and He lived and He died and He rose again so that we would know, that we would know resurrection light, resurrection light. And my question this morning, and I ask a few questions this morning, just a heads up, but um, my question this morning is, do you believe in the light of heaven? Yeah, I see that hand. <laughs> do you believe in the light of heaven? Do you believe in the resurrection light? It's beautiful and it's powerful and it's quite amazing that we have heaven in this house. And we have heaven in our hearts and it's closer than we know, closer than our breath. And so this morning, if you have your Bibles, just to preface this message, I wanna read to you Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 and Paul is writing to the church of Ephesus. And I wonder if this morning, if we can imagine that this is being handwritten to us as a community of believers, as a community of Christ followers, as Hillsong Church. I wonder if we can imagine that this is handwritten directly for this moment, for us, for us here as Hillsong Church, amen. So it says this, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we stop there, right there? Would you receive grace and peace this morning? That's the power of a blessing is when we receive it. And I don't know about you, but when we come into a place like this, I pray that our, our, our hands would be open to receive the grace and the peace in the Name of the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms and with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will to the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the one He loves. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us. He lavishes on us the forgiveness of our sins. He has lavished on us redemption through His blood. Anyone thankful for that on Palm Sunday as we approach Easter? Praise God for that. He lavished on us us. with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In Him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of His glory. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the Gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Who knows that we need to give thanks for one another and we need to remember us in our prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's a good prayer to pray, don't you think? That God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart, and this is where I wanna, I wanna preface my message with this today. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of His glorious inheritance in His holy people and His incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength He exerted when He raised Christ from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. For above all rule and authority, power and dominion, every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under His feet and appointed Him to be head over everything for the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him who fills everything in every way. Come on, are you grateful for the Word of God this morning? Are you thankful for the Scriptures? Are you thankful for that blessing that is so filled with promise and so filled with hope and so filled with the reality, the reality of our salvation? It's a beautiful and a wonderful thing. And so this morning, if I could just zone in on verse 18. Verse 18, and I'm gonna read it again, but from the, from the Passion Translation, it says this, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light. Everybody say light. Flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of His calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritances that He finds in us, His holy ones. In the Matthew Henry commentary, when it's uh, 
kind of it's unpacking that specific verse. It says this, It may be understood of the glorious inheritance or in among the saints in heaven, where God does, as it were, lay forth all of His riches to make them glorious. And where all that the saints are in position of is transcendently glorious. As the knowledge that can be attained of this upon earth is very desirable and must be exceedingly entertaining and delightful. So let us endeavour then by reading, contemplation and prayer to know as much of heaven as we can, that we, that we may be desiring and longing to be there. Do you know that you have heaven in your heart? In Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, it says that God has placed eternity in our hearts. It says that He has made everything beautiful in its time, which speaks to His healing and His redemptive power, that He is making everything beautiful in its time. So if your story is not yet beautiful yet, just know God's not finished yet. He's still working to turn your story around, to see it completed in all of His beauty because that's who He is. He's a healing God, He's a redemptive God. But He has placed eternity in our hearts, which means with every breath that we breathe and every day that we live, our soul, our soul is longing for heaven. Our soul is longing for God. Our soul is longing for eternity because God created that way. He created us that way. He, when He formed us, He created our hearts with a longing for Him, a longing for God, a longing for heaven, a longing for eternity. And that's why nothing of this world will ever satisfy us. That's why nothing of this world will ever truly satisfy our soul. Only God can satisfy our souls. And I pray this morning that we would get our eyes off that which is temporary, off that which is momentary, our momentary afflictions, and that instead we would turn our eyes upon Jesus. That we would fix our eyes on Jesus on our eternal God, our eternal hope, amen? Amen. Amen. A few weeks ago, well, actually it wasn't a few weeks ago, it was the end of last year, so more than a few weeks ago, uh, it was Peter Kaiser Toganavalu's birthday. Uh, <laughs> no, you don't need to celebrate him, it was ages ago. Um, well, we should always celebrate Pete. What a great guy. Come on, let's give it up. Let's give it up. Great guy, great guy. <laughs> um, and because he, because he is um, a good guy and I, I like him a lot, I love him, I wanted to spoil him for his birthday. And so I organised a few things. Um, I organised just a couple of friends to come over. We had a small gathering, had some, some pizzas. It was a good time. And then um, I actually moved heaven and earth to perform an absolute miracle. And some of you are really gonna appreciate this. I found him a PlayStation 5. Now, I mean, I have to tell you, it was hard to find, but the Lord provided. And He loved it so much that when He took it home, He put the seatbelt over it. He took a selfie with it, posted it on Instagram saying my new prized possession. So that was nice for Him. Um, and then the next day um, we went out on a date and it was just Pete and I and we went to a restaurant on the beach. It was lovely um, and we had a three course meal. He ordered the chicken for that lean protein uh, followed by chocolate um, and <laughs> <laughs> and we had good conversation, you know, solid convo, you know, about 
the kids and um, paying our bills and, and the kids. Isn't it funny? Do you parents find that? You go out, you finally get some kid free time and then you end up talking about them the entire time. Guilty. Um, and so we're having this lovely, lovely night. And then all of a sudden, I felt the atmosphere change. There was a sudden change in the atmosphere. And what happened is all of a sudden, light filled the entire place. The light changed and it changed the mood. It it shifted everything as this light cascaded into the restaurant, filling the entire place. And as I looked, uh, turned around and looked out the window and looked out towards the beach, I realised it was that amazing moment just before the sun has set where everything turns golden. You know that moment where everything turns golden and it's like heaven meets earth and it is so, so beautiful beautiful and it's hard to really avoid it because it is so breathtaking. And so I did what every girl would do in this situation. I got out my phone to take a photo. Of course, of course. So I got my phone out and I walked, I left Pete um, and I walked outside and I um, I took a photo of the most beautiful, um, beautiful sight of God's creation where the sky was filled with the most vibrant colours and and it was so beautiful. And I looked to my left and realised every girl in the restaurant had left their partners and had walked outside. We were all taking photos. Any other girls would do that? Any other guys would do that? Uh, Not many, that's okay. Um, And I think what would happen, uh, what would happen there is that most girls would post it on their Instagrams, perhaps, and caption it, "Golden Hour, Golden Hour." And so I bring this thought to you today because I guess my hope is that as we leave here and we go about our lives, uh, my my intention this morning, my desire this morning, is not to bring you some ethereal idea you know, ethereal kind of message that that you cannot apply into the reality of your life. But rather my prayer this morning is that you would understand that it is the very reality of our daily lives and our daily routines that needs to understand. Our hearts need to understand the God reality and how we, when we open up the eyes of our heart, and our God-given imagination is illuminated to the wonder of heaven, it changes everything for us. It changes everything for us and our situations, our circumstances, it changes everything. And so I have three points this morning about a golden hour, the golden hour. And it's this, the golden hour, is a divine disruption, a divine disruption, a holy interruption. Will you stop? Will you stop? In the golden hour, number two, it gives us the eternal perspective. The eternal perspective, will you look? Will you look? And number three, the golden hour assures us, assures us. Will you see? Will you see? So my first point, the golden hour is a divine disruption, a holy interruption. In John chapter one, verse one, it says this, in the very beginning, the living expression was already there and the living expression was with God, yet fully God. Next. They were together face to face in the beginning. And through His creative inspiration, this living expression made all things, for nothing has existence apart from Him. Life came into being because of Him, for His life is light. Everybody say light. 
His life is light for all humanity. And this living expression is the light that bursts through gloom. Let me say that again. This living expression, the light for all humanity, this living expression is the light that bursts through gloom. The light that darkness could not diminish, could not diminish. Light disrupts the darkness. Light disrupts the gloom. Light, it interrupts and shifts the atmosphere. Like when Amanda was encouraging us around our our offering and she said, she talked about the power of, of the atmosphere changing. That's what light does. When you invite it in, when you invite light in, it instantly changes the atmosphere. It changes the mood. And that's what happens when we have these moments, these golden hour moments, we invite the light in and it disrupts the darkness in our lives. It disrupts the darkness of this world. It disrupts the gloom because we are given in a moment the heavenly perspective. We are given in a moment the eternal hope that we have in Jesus. In a moment, light diminishes darkness. And this is the light of heaven that we have access to. And it is a holy disruption, an anointed interruption. And my prayer is that as a church, we would welcome the holy interruptions in our lives. The holy interruptions, and they may be very, very ordinary moments of your days. Perhaps it's on the bus on the way to school or on the train on the way to work and suddenly God opens up the heaven upon you, heavens upon you. I pray that we would welcome the holy disruptions, the divine interruptions. The heaven, listen to this, heaven has orchestrated these moments to get us as Christ followers to stop, to stop what we're doing, to admire His beauty, to admire and gaze upon the beauty of the Lord to stop us in our negative train of thoughts, to stop us through, maybe through a conversation that isn't so healthy, to stop us in the middle of our grief or our pain. God has orchestrated these moments for us to stop, to stop what we're doing, to leave the table as it were, and to look towards the heavens where we get our eyes off the things of this world and we see the Lord for who He is, seated at the right hand of our Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, name that is above every other name in heaven and on earth. But I think as a humanity, we are like professional avoiders, yeah. I know it's getting real, Brent Garrett. (laughs) Professional avoiders. And and I think sometimes we can be like the people in the restaurant, perhaps who goes, oh, that's nice, and then keeps talking. And we can perhaps do that when God wants to show us things and reveal things to us. And He wants to give us a glimpse of hope and a glimpse of peace and disrupt us where we're at. And we can go, oh yeah, and then continue on. But I pray that we would be the type of believers that stop. And we're stopped in our tracks. We look and we see what the Lord is doing. You know, Jesus, He brought disruption everywhere that He went. He did, as He walked on earth, everywhere He went, He was a holy interruption. In fact, it says in in Luke, 
Luke 12 verse 49, it says, I've come, Jesus is speaking, I've come to start a fire on this earth. How I wish it were blazing right now. I've come to change everything, turn everything right side up. How I long for it to be finished. Do you think I came to smooth things over and make everything nice? Not so, I've come to disrupt. I've come to disrupt and that's what Jesus does. Everywhere He went, He disrupted people in the middle of their pain. And He bought love. He disrupted people in the middle of their sickness and He bought healing. He disrupted people in the middle of their grief and He bought life. He disrupted people in the middle of their religious meetings and He bought truth. That's what Jesus does. He is a holy interruption, a divine disruption that, that, that bursts through the gloom, that bursts through the darkness. And I pray that as Christians, as believers, we would not be so preoccupied that we miss it, that we actively avoid, but instead we would stop what we're doing and see what God is doing, amen? Amen. Number two, the golden hour brings an eternal perspective, the eternal perspective. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 18, it says, so we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look, as we look, not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient. The things that are seen are momentary. The things that are seen are fleeting. The things that are seen are fading away. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Hillsong Church, it's time to look up. It's time to look up. It's time to get our eyes off the things of this world, off our momentary afflictions, off the circumstances of our lives. It's time to get our eyes off the things of this world and get our eyes on Jesus. Get our eyes on God. God who is the same yesterday, today and forever. God who is King and Lord over all. God who rules and reigns in this world and in our lives and in our hearts and in our hearts. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from looking to the hills, looking up. And my prayer would be that we would look, that we would not just stop, but we would look. We would look to God. We would look to the Lord, that our, our gaze would be on the beauty of the Lord. You know, coming to church, it's like a golden hour. It is, coming to church is like a golden hour. We come, we set aside this, this hour and a half to hear the Word of God, to let it speak to us to worship in His presence, it's a golden hour. And we choose to look. We choose to look to God. I love Psalm 27, one thing I desire of the Lord, this Lord will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze, to look upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire Him in His temple. And like I said, you can have that moment at any moment of your lives, in your ordinary lives, in your ordinary routines. But I pray that we wouldn't just stop, but we would also look, amen, amen. And number three, as the team comes up and joins me, the golden hour, it brings blessed, everybody say blessed, 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 blessed assurance, assurance. My question is, will you see? Will you see? In 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, it says this, 
My purpose in writing is simply this, that you who believe in God's Son will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life, the reality and not the illusion. And how bold and free we then become in His presence, freely asking according to His will, sure, positive, absolute, assured that He is listening. And if we're confident that He's listening, we know that what we've asked for is as good as ours. Assurance. Assurance is a blessing. Assurance. And I have a word for some, someone this morning. I believe that you are gonna be reassured. Reassured, which means restoring your confidence and trust. That you would know, you would know that without a shadow of a doubt, our faith, our faith is not in what is seen, but what is in unseen. Have you lost your confidence in God? Have you forgotten to trust? Is your faith in question? You know what doubts do? They cast shadows over you. They cast shadows over your purpose. They cast shadows over your destiny. They cast shadows over your sense of belief in yourself. That's what doubts do, they cast shadows. But when you get your eyes off the temporary and your eyes onto that which is eternal, it's like the heavens open up and you are flooded with the light of heaven. You are flooded with the truth of God's Word. You are flooded with the truth that Jesus is seated at the right hand of our Father, that our sins are forgiven. We don't need to live in guilt and shame. We can be assured of that because Jesus paid the price on the cross when His blood was spilled for every single one of us so our sins would be forgiven. We don't need to hide in fear. Not when we can be assured that the Lord is our light and our salvation and our safe refuge. We don't need to be rocked by the storm, the storms of life. Not when we know that Jesus, our Jesus is a safe refuge from the storm. We can be assured of that. And my prayer for us this week, online, wherever you find yourself, as you go about your lives, is that our declaration would be this, I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. I know, I know, I know that I know that I know that Christ cares for me. I know that I know that I know that He loves me. I know that I know that I know that I know that He loves His church. He loves His church and this is His church. And the gates of hell cannot, shall not, will not prevail against His church. I know that I know that I know that His Word is alive and living. I know that I know that I know that I know that I know it is a blessed assurance that brings deep satisfaction to your soul. And you can get by in your salvation without that sense of assurance, but I don't believe that you can truly be satisfied without that trust in God, confidence in God. And so a golden hour moment, the golden hour where you receive a touch from heaven, where the eyes of our heart are opened to this eternal hope that we have and the rich inheritances that we have through the glory of our salvation, through the rule and reign of God. What does that look like for you today? Does it look like hope? in a sense of hopelessness? Does it look like strength for 
your week, for your family? What does it look like for you? Does it look like grace? His grace that covers us, that covers every single mistake that you have ever made or the grace that empowers us for the, for the stuff that is beyond us? Does it look like just His holy presence? His holy presence that is here. Heaven is here. Heaven is in this house. Heaven is in our hearts. And so we're gonna take a moment in our last couple of minutes to have a golden hour moment. And I pray if that's you and you desire to hear from heaven, you desire to have a touch from heaven, if that's you, why don't you stand to your feet? Because I think in reality, this message is a message of worship. It's a, it's a message about worship. It's a, it's a message about getting our eyes off us, off the things of this world and our eyes on God. And so would you lift your hands towards heaven if you're comfortable? God, You are good. You are good and You do good. And we love You, You are faithful and You are majestic. You are supreme. You are the all powerful God. You are in control. And You love us, Lord Jesus. You love us that You gave Your life for us. You forgave us of our sins. And You died and rose again so that we would know life, that we would know salvation, not just the moment that we give our lives to You, but every day, every moment of our life, that salvation causes us to be baptised in Your salvation daily, every moment, Lord God. And so I pray that You would reveal again Your salvation in our hearts, in our lives. Today is the day of salvation. And so we worship You, we love You, we want You, we want You, we need You, oh God. We need Your presence, we need Your power. We look to You. In Jesus' Name, let's worship.